Hare Krishna. So today, <coughs> we'll speak on a topic of immense relevance to all of us. The world is facing probably one of the biggest uh, crises in recent history. That is the coronavirus. Amid this coronavirus, which is spreading all over, how do we, how is our Krishna Bhakti relevant to us? How do we surrender to Krishna? In such a situation, can we say that because we are devotees of Krishna, we just do all, just continue our bhakti, and Krishna will protect us, or are we meant to do something specific? Also, so I'll talk this in three broad parts. I'll talk about two dimensions of surrender. Then I'll talk about how we need to be both resourceful and faithful, and then I'll conclude by talking about how we need to present ourselves to Krishna in the present. So broadly speaking, surrender, often we have certain conceptions of surrender. So the word surrender sometimes has a negative connotation. Say there's a fight going on between two people and say one person is defeated or one army is defeated and that army general raises the white flag of surrender. So surrender often has that negative connotation of reluctant, often resentful, Submission. Now that is definitely not the mood of surrender when we talk about surrender to Krishna. So that is a voluntary submission of our will. A voluntary offering our heart to Krishna. Just like when two people are in love with each other. Two people love each other. Then uh, one person wants to do one thing. The other person wants to do other thing. So one of them might say, okay, whatever you say, I'll do it. That's because there is love over there. So it's a voluntary offering of our heart that surrender and now how is the surrender expressed when you think about surrender is there any devotional character that comes to your mind who is the standard who are the standard examples of surrender in the bhakti tradition yes hanuman okay how does he surrender yes Okay, excellent. He does only for uh, Lord Ram. Good example. Thank you. Yes, any other example of surrender? Arjuna, Bali Maharaj. Yes, Prahlad Maharaj. Okay. If you want a visual image of surrender, whose image comes up when you talk about surrender? Yeah. Draupadi. Yes, isn't it? Draupadi, what does she do? Raises her hands up in surrender. So we could say, there are two distinct aspects of surrender which are illustrated by two characters. So one aspect of surrender is Draupadi with her upraised arms in helplessness, in helpless submission to Krishna. And at the end of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna also tells Arjuna to surrender. Arjuna says, yes, I will surrender. Krishna says, Sarvadharma in 1876. In 1873, Arjuna says, yes, tava, I surrender to you. But Arjuna doesn't surrender by raising his hands up. He surrenders by raising his bow up in readiness to fight. So, these two are distinct. One is, Krishna, I am helpless. You please help me. I, I, I surrender to you. Please protect me. The other is, Krishna, I will do your will. So, now, Hanuman's example that you gave just now, Hanuman is, I will do your will, O oh Lord. Uh, if you can say Prahlad's example, he prays, folded hands, whatever you want, let it happen. So, basically, <coughs> there are two, these two, Draupadi and Arjuna, express two distinct aspects of surrender. We could call as diligence for Krishna and dependence on Krishna. So, dependence on Krishna, Krishna. It's not in my control. I just, I just surrender to you. You depend on Krishna. But the other aspect of surrender is also diligence for Krishna. Krishna, I will do my best for you. I will do what I can with my full preparation. So among Draupadi and Arjuna, who is exhibiting dependence on Krishna? Draupadi. Draupadi. And Arjuna is exhibiting diligence for Krishna. 
so they are in different situations and based on their situations they are doing different things so what is the difference in their situations essentially that's it here that in any situation in our life there are some things in our control and some things not in our control so when the things are not in our control that is where there is dependence on krishna and for the things that are in our control there has to be diligence for krishna and both are ways of expressing our devotion to krishna so now in the case of draupadi what had happened she had tried first she had tried to reason with the kuru assembly to stop them from uh, doing what they were about to do the horrible thing then she had tried to use her physical force physical strength to stop dushyasan from doing his heinous act she tried everything she could now it was nothing was in her control so then it is dependence on krishna in the case of arjuna on the war field what had happened he was a warrior he was although officially not the commander of the kapanda forces nishtadyumna was the commander but he was the foremost warrior among them and uh, armies rise or fall defended significantly on him so krishna wanted that war fought because the people on the opposite side were adharmic were vicious they were law breakers they were terrorizers and they had to be punished so then fighting fighting competently that was in his control so arjuna takes up his bow to rise so raises up his bow that means what is in his control he will do wholeheartedly so basically both of them can express surrender that we say surrender by doing what is in our control diligently and by submitting to krishna's will for what is not in our control okay you take care of it krishna how if we take a simple example say suppose now i have come to give this talk now the, even if i want to speak on dependence on krishna uh, i i need to prepare for that talk you know, I, I, about 20 25 years ago when i started speaking for the first time for about krishna's message one of my guides gave me 10 points guideline about how to speak in public for krishna and the last point was depend on krishna and in bracket depend on krishna but only after you have prepared <laughs> if i don't prepare and if i come and say i am dependent on krishna well that's not dependence on krishna that is irresponsibility i have a service to do and i need to do my service well so basically for the things that are in our control we need to do our best so from my side i need to prepare as well as i can but then if somehow the mind starts feeling afraid and says now what if people ask difficult questions what if you are not able to answer the questions uh, then depend on krishna that is not in my control what kind of questions people are going to ask that is not in my control so for what is not in my control depend on krishna for what is in my control uh, be diligent for krishna so satatam kirtayanto mam yatantasya drudhagratah so they talk about devotees in 914 in the bhagavad gita that yatantasya drudhagratah they endeavor with determination which is very significant krishna is not saying they just depend on me he is saying the devotees endeavor with determination and endeavor with determination is diligence for krishna so we have this combination of dependence and diligence and surrender is a dynamic dance between the two sometimes we are dependent on krishna or for some things we are dependent on krishna for some things we are diligent for krishna now how does all this apply in our context today so this diligence and dependence we can translate into two things the second part of the talk will be be resourceful and be faithful be resourceful that means we have to look at our situation and identify what is in our control now life is very dynamic and that's why what is in our control and what is not in our control also keeps changing constantly so we need to observe okay what is in my control and be resourceful to observe that learn that and do that so for example now with this whole coronavirus scare uh, scare spreading 
then there are some essential precautions that the medical experts tell us and we need to take those precautions so the, the israeli prime minister in national address said that all of us should now adopt the hindu namaste instead of the shake hands <laughs> so it is he is recognizing the value of that so this is something which is in our hands to do so if we don't do what is in our hands and say i depend on krishna that is not dependence on krishna that is a responsibility that is foolishness so the idea is there is there are necessary risks which we have to take but there are unnecessary or foolhardy risks which come because we are careless so we identify what is in our control and then for that we have to be resourceful okay what is in my control maybe i can i can i'm very careful when i go to public places where all kinds of people come especially when i'm at airports or whatever i wash my hands regularly these are important things which we need to do and how is this we may say this is just mundane precautions no but this, this if our intention is to serve krishna ultimately if our life is devoted to krishna then everything that we do is a part of our service to krishna or can be a part of our service to krishna so that dependence on krishna or that surrender to krishna is expressed through our diligence for krishna so whatever precautions we can take we should take so many temples across the world at least in america in uk in uh, in europe they have shifted to the sunday programs on skype on zoom that we don't want to stop glorifying krishna we don't want to stop hearing about krishna but if it is risky to do it directly then let's do it indirectly indirectly means then the physical proximity is a risk but we don't have to have physical proximity to have a digit, digit, to spiritual connections so that's its precautions which we take so there is diligence for krishna as we are resourceful and identify what is in our control sometimes say nothing is in my control i just give up no we have to use our intelligence and we have to be resourceful in fact this resourcefulness can be taken to a to a the highest degree in the bhakti principle of manas puja manas puja means that we can worship krishna in our mind i suppose we are sick or we are somehow not able to come to the temple in our mind we can visualize entering the temple we can visualize offering a worship to the lord bowing down we offering garlands decorating the lord and if done sincerely this can also lead to our spiritual growth this will also please krishna of course manas puja is to be done when direct puja is not possible if it is possible we will we say we will do manas puja then that is we are we are just fooling ourselves so because the genuineness of devotion of love is that we want to offer the best that we can to our beloved lord so if we can't offer ourselves physically by coming in front of the lord and offer obeisances offering worship and offering prayers offering our devotion then we offer it mentally in our heart but if we can do more and then we do less that doesn't signify our devotion so be resourceful is one aspect fine so, so even if nothing is in our control we can at least we can offer our thoughts to krishna that which is in our control so we can be resourceful at that level also and then there is be faithful be faithful means that we understand what is in our control and what is beyond our control so what is beyond our control is not out of control it is in krishna's control there is this plan and even things might seem is might seem to be chaotic there is a plan working out through it all so imagine a child, small child is on the mother's lap lying down and the mother is weaving some cloth the cloth is over here and the child is watching the thread comes from up the, the needle comes down goes up comes down goes up now from the bottom when the when the child sees it it just appears to be like a disorderly threading okay it's coming up coming down but to when the cloth is inverted so oh there's a beautiful design over here maybe uh, it's a birthday gift that the mother is giving for the child and it's a muffler and the, and the muffler the mother has written the name of the child but what has happened from below can't see, the child doesn't see it just see the needle coming in and going out so similarly 
we see things from a lower perspective right now our perspectives are limited and because of that we might see things are just happening in a disorderly way so tasya nuvihito rajan lishu bhagavata mein said that everything is within the plan of the lord vishnu pitama says to yudhishthir maharaj assuring him that everything is within the lord's plan tasya nuvihito rajan so even when for us things this is why is this happening what is this happening what is that happening we understand krishna's plan is still operational and krishna now will be the things will be orchestrated for our ultimate good that means sometimes some bad things happen and we don't have to imagine that there are no bad things everything is good no bad things do happen in life but krishna is so expert that he can bring good even out of the bad he can bring good even out of the bad so that's why when we find things are not in our control and they seem to be going haywire we need to be faithful so be resourceful to find out to understand what is in your control and do the best that you can be faithful when things seem to be careening out of control know that they are still the krishna's plan is still working so now this combination of being both resourceful and faithful we see this in arjuna's example Arjuna heard from Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita and Krishna told Arjuna fight and attain victory in 1133 he says tasmat muttishtha yasho labhasva jitva shatrun bhumsho rajyam samriddham mayai vaite nihatah purvam eva nimitta matram bhavasau vyasachi tasmat muttishtha Arjuna rise yasho labhasva attain victory mayai vaite nihatah purvam eva by my arrangement your enemies have been killed nimitta matram bhavasau vesachi nimitta matram just be an instrument in my fight it's significant when krishna is telling arjuna just be an instrument he also calls him sau vesachi sau vesachi means one who is ambidextrous ambidextrous is one who can fight equally well with both hands so the idea is arjuna is very competent and the perfection of arjuna's expertise is to become an expert to become an instrument in the hands of the supreme expert so arjuna's ability is not denied but arjuna's ability is directed by krishna so in today's world there are doctors there are medical professionals who are trying to do research they are trying to find out how can this be cured and ultimately it is within their hearts krishna is there as a parmatma and krishna is guiding them and when they find something it is credit it is their credit but it's also we understand it's not just their credit it is krishna guiding through them so we see krishna's hand all around us so now arjuna at one level knew from the gita at krishna is arranged my enemies will be killed and that gave him confidence but that confidence did not lead him to passivity or complacence oh krishna has arranged for all these enemies to be killed then then i'll just sit back and relax and the arrangement will happen no he said i have to be the instrument and he fought every single day arjuna would make careful plans every day to be a grueling exhausting fight and there were painful reversals except that abhimanyu at one time 13 the day especially abhimanyu was killed was devastating for arjuna but he persevered through it so the idea is arjuna heard the gita he got the confidence from the gita but he used his gandiva to fight whole heartedly so the gita gave him knowledge and faith that what was beyond his control krishna is going to orchestrate that but what was in his control he has to do it and he did that so similarly we have shri prabhupad's example Shri Prabhupada, when he came to uh, went to America at that time, on the coast of America, the in you know, Butler, Pennsylvania, when he was there, uh, when he was nearing New York, basically at that time, he observed the American coastline. And observing the American coastline, he composed a song called the Markine Bhagavad Dharma. and in that song he says that my dear lord please make me a puppet he says that you must have brought me here for some purpose 
মিসেস আছে কিছু কার্য তবে এই অনুমানে নাহে কেন আনিবে এই উগ্রস্থানে আমি <laughs> not even a passenger ship it was a cargo ship and she had come so it is an exhausting journey he had also fallen sick along the way it got heart attacks in fact not just minor sickness so through it all he came and when he came he didn't know exactly what he was going to do so he said that what was it is not in his control so you must have some plan for me that's why you brought me here but then although he doesn't know what exactly he is going to do or where exactly he is going to do it but he knows what he is going to do he says what well, he is in the future verses he says that i have come here to glorify you o lord so i will glorify you bhagavate ra katha se tab avatar dhir haiya shunne jadi kane bar bar that my dear lord the, the past times of the shrimad bhagavatam the story of the bhagavatam is bhagavate ra katha se tab avatar it is non different from you So Prabhupada felt I am not alone. Krishna is with me. And what will and he says that if I just, if people just hear about Krishna do the Bhagavatam, they will become sober, they will become calm, they will become regulated. So, so he said that I am going to speak about Krishna. So one person might one person might come, ten might come, ten thousand might come, a million might come. But I will speak. And so what is in his control? Speaking about Krishna is in his control. Now, how many people will come? Where he will get to speak? That is not in his control. but for what was in his control he did it diligently now many of shila prabhupad's early disciples who would meet him in the early days and then later on they would meet him when he would become a world famous spiritual teacher with thousands of people following him and his talks would sometimes had thousands and thousands 20000 30000 people coming they would say that prabhupad even when he was talking in a private darshan with a few people and when he was speaking with thousands of people he had the same enthusiasm same energy the same seriousness of purpose was prabhupada was not just speaking to the people there he was speaking for krishna's pleasure and whether in the room there are five people or there are 5000 people krishna is there so prabhupada was glorifying krishna what he was doing his part he was doing wholeheartedly that is diligence for krishna in fact prabhupada would speak about krishna all day to anyone who came to meet him and when and for those people who didn't come to meet him prabhupada was speaking about krishna all night writing his books so in future they would read those books that was diligence for krishna but then what would happen he had no idea so he says i am dependent on you for that he compares himself to a puppet he says na chao na chao prabhu na chao se mate kashthir putthali jata na chao se mate my dear lord please make me dance like a puppeteer a puppet master makes a puppeteer makes a puppet dance please make me dance oh lord so he said whatever you want i will do that means wherever you want me to go whoever you want me to speak i'll speak but i am going to speak about krishna speak about you oh lord and how krishna made prabhupad dance krishna arranged for prabhupad to have a magnificent stage if you look from a historical perspective it's amazing what happened now most of you are probably immigrants from india or some other places so now when we come to another country often there is legal issues there is visa and when prabhupad came to america or went to america in 1965 krish krish prabhupad said i am determined to dance for you krishna but krishna amazingly arranged a stage for him what was the stage krishna arranged that that was the time in 1965 just a couple of months before prabhupad came America loosened its immigration rules. And that's why Prabhupada got a two month visa, but he kept extending it, extending it, and he was able to extend for many years, in fact. And not only that, that was the time when America was in a state of counterculture, where the American youth were quite disappointed. Their lives was, they had everything that people in material life dream for. They had wealth, they had comforts, they had luxuries, and they felt there has to be something more in life. 
and thus they started rejecting the mainstream culture to explore something else and, and they, they somehow got into drugs at that time because somebody told them that some people told them that by drugs you can grow spiritually so they started taking a drug called LSD now LSD is a chemical but they re-christianed renamed LSD as anybody who takes LSD joins the league of spiritual discovery LSD <laughs> that was their idea <laughs> so they were thinking like that but they were simply getting more and more hooked into it but Prabhupada said that you can you can become Krishna consciousness, remember Krishna, chant Krishna's names and you can go higher than what any drug can ever take you. You can stay higher. So, these people were receptive like they were not. If Prabhupada had gone in 1955, 1960, they would not have been that receptive. If Prabhupada had gone in the 1970s, by that time that counterculture phase had, had disappeared more or less. So, Krishna, Prabhupada just went there and Krishna had arranged a stage for him. So, there is dependence on Krishna and there is diligence for Krishna. So, Prabhupada is diligent. I am going to speak about Krishna to the best of my capacity. And dependence, Krishna are in the stage. So, we do not know in our lives what is the plan Krishna has for us. So, what do we do? This was the conclusion. You can have your questions after that. that present yourself to Krishna in the present. We don't know what the future holds. The present is what we have. And what we do is, we present ourselves to Krishna. How do we present ourselves to Krishna? By our service attitude. Krishna, in this situation, how best can I serve you? How best can I serve you? Now, if we try to serve Krishna, what will happen is, each one of us grows through that. So, if I ask, we become more connected with Krishna, we grow spiritually. We have various material shelters in the world. We have our home, we have our jobs, we have our health insurance, we have our government, say border security or police or whatever. And they are all shelters. And they all have their place, they all have their importance. So our situation is like a bird. We are all like small birds. We have wings. But we have not used our wings to fly. And we are seated on a we are seated on a branch, and that branch has become our home. But that branch, when that branch starts shaking, the bird starts panicking, hey, this branch is shaking, I'll fall down, I'll die. But when the branch starts shaking and the bird starts fearing I may die, fall and die, that's when the bird starts. What do I do? And then the bird starts discovering, oh, I have these wings and with these wings I can fly. So as long as the bird is comfortable on the branch, the bird may not even try to fly. So like that, we are spiritual beings and our capacity for spiritual understanding, for spiritual realization, for understanding that we are eternal beings, we are meant for an eternal life beyond this world, that capacity is our wings but as long as we are in a materially comfortable situation we never exercise our wings we just stay where we are we think I'm comfortable over here and when we stay comfortable at that time our wings not only stay inactive they start atrophying so sometimes the branch starts getting shaken when the material shelters that we have they start getting shaken then what happened? That's when. What am I to do? How am I to move on? That's when we start discovering our wings. So, it is, it is times like, dangerous times like these when we are reminded of spiritual truths. See, our bodies are virus prone. But our souls are virus proof. No virus can ever endanger the soul. Nainam chindanti shastrani so in 2.22 in the Bhagavad Gita Krishna says nothing, uh, 2.23 says nothing material can ever damage the soul. So we could, <clears throat> we could add in that list to it. No, no virus can contaminate, disease or destroy the soul. So we are that spiritual being. 
and to the extent we learn spiritual truths we assimilate spiritual truths we apply ourselves to spiritual practices to the extent we start realizing it so if we go now a bird can live on the branch and eventually the branch breaks and the bird falls to its death but when the bird is still young the bird is still has energy and then the branch starts shaking that's when the bird starts discovering its wings so similarly for us when we go through troubles there are some troubles which are just unavoidable they come upon us instead of trying to escape the trouble instead of resent the trouble we see that as a necessary trouble for our growth so the shaking up of the branch within us is a necessary trouble what does it do it forces us to discover our wings so beyond our destructible bodies lies our indestructible soul beyond the fear and the panic that may be there at the material level there is peace and plan at the spiritual level the soul is the soul is a part of god and krishna has his plan going on so we start realizing this if we go through the necessary troubles with spiritual understanding then we go beyond unnecessary troubles what do we mean by unnecessary troubles the unnecessary trouble is the continuation of the cycle of birth and death it is our continuing in material existence uh, today there is great fear of the virus well yes there is reason to be cautious but at the same time each one of us has to die some day or other our bodies are perishable you know we are, our body is every like if you buy a product from a shop the product has expired date which is written over there our body has expired date it is just not visible to us right so we are all going to die one day but before we die if we become spiritually conscious if before we die we learn to devote ourselves to krishna if before our death comes we learn to make krishna the foremost object of our love then what will happen then at the time time of death our body will fall but our soul will rise like sometimes there is this my some action movie in which say a hero is tied to a car and the villain starts the car and pushes it towards the cliff and it pushes it towards the cliff that is going towards the cliff going towards the cliff going to the cliff it falls down and it is destroyed but and the villain yeah yeah the hero is destroyed but what happens inside the hero is trying to free 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 themselves and the hero frees themselves and as the, the car is about to go off the cliff you know a helicopter comes from above it throws a rope <laughs> it throws a rope down and the hero is freed himself the hero catches the rope and the car crashes but the hero is saved now uh, this might happen in some action movies and you might say it's laughable but actually for us that is how for those who are devoted death is like that the body is like the car the body is going to go off the cliff it is going to crash but if we strive to free ourselves from our worldly attachments then at the time of the death we are free and then krishna extends his hand tesham aham samuddhata mrityu sansar sagarat bhavami na chirat partha maya veshit chetasam Krishna says, "If you become conscious of me, I will lift you up from material existence." So that is what Krishna is eager to do for us, and we all want to prepare for that. So the our wings need to grow before the branch under us breaks. Our soul needs to awaken before our body perishes, and situations like these, crises like these. Are, are like shock treatment they jolt us out of our spiritual stupor and they force us to wake up so if we wake up and we take shelter of krishna more intensely then whatever happens good or bad krishna will be with us guiding us through it to take us towards our ultimate goal krishna is our greatest well wisher and life may send us through great difficulties but krishna can convert those difficulties into opportunities for us and krishna can take us through even the most hurtful situations to a better place now whatever 
karma may get us to krishna will get us through whatever karma may get us to krishna will get us through so i'll summarize i spoke today on the topic of how can we surrender to krishna amid the corona virus crisis and i talked about should we just depend on krishna and let everything be taken care of or should we just how should we respond so i talked about surrender has two dimensions we talked about two images draupadi with upraised hands arjuna with upraised bow so there is two dimensions of surrender are dependence on krishna for the things that are not in our control and diligence for krishna to toward krishna means for krishna regarding the things in our control so we need to be resourceful to understand what is in my control and focus on that and we need to be faithful that even if things which are beyond our control seem chaotic that krishna has a plan even if the the thread seem to be in a disorderly pattern from our perspective there is a beautiful design being drawn from above so krishna's plan is working even through the bad things that happen in our life and then i talked lastly about how we need to present ourselves to krishna in the present that means whatever situation comes in our life krishna how can i serve you right now i am you you are my lord i want to be your doctor sevak let me how can i serve you and we keep that attitude then sometimes there will be diligence sometimes there will be dependence i talked about shila prabhupad he he was determined to speak about krishna and he was de- dependent about what kind of setting he would get for pleasing him speaking about krishna and krishna arranged a magnificent stage by which his dance reached the whole world and we are all spiritual beings but we are caught in material our attachments are caught in material things so we are in a car which is going to crash sooner or later so we are all going to die but before our body crashes to death our soul needs to become free then if we disentangle ourselves from our worldly attachments krishna will come and rescue us from that crashing car but for that to happen sometimes we need to be shaken if we just become complacent comfortable in our worldly situations krishna shakes the things up sometimes so we are like birds who have never you who are hardly ever used our wings so when the branch shakes that's when we are forced to look at our wings and uh, activate and use them so our wings are our spiritual awareness our spiritual realization our spiritual attraction toward krishna and when our various shelters our belt our our comfortable situation they shake and that's where we are forced to develop the wings so if we go through the necessary trouble of looking beyond our immediate comforts and activating our spiritual resources then the, un- the unnecessary trouble of facing the trauma of death and rebirth again that can be avoided and we can attain krishna thank you very much hare krishna are there any questions or comments Yes, from. Thank you very much for the very structured class. Uh, something for us to learn here. So, we just I got actually two questions, but I'll ask one, and then after this time I'll ask the other. Number one is uh, we said we need to know what is in our control, and the two ways we need to, we should be resourceful, we need we need to do our duty, and we should be faithful. Yes. And we mentioned that. know what is beyond our control will be orchestrated by krishna for our ultimate good means anything which is seemingly yeah. bad happening now is in krishna's plan and it's probably for its ultimately for our good my question is not from the macro but micro level now my day to day running the day to day lives of our devotees if everything is in krishna's plan and that's how it is how do we decipher how do we make out what is necessary trouble i e that krishna is giving me this trouble for me to reach somewhere hmm that's one how do i distinguish that is this the case or that it's happening because of my desires which are misfiring okay or it's a punishment of my past life karma okay Yeah. Good question. Yeah. So, if we 
are facing some troubles are this necessary trouble which are in krishna's plan or are this because of our own desires we are creating those troubles or is it reactions to our past because of which those troubles are coming in general it's very easy when we apply philosophy to get into paralysis by analysis mm -hmm. let's analyze so much so much so much it's like a, once there's a hundred a centipede a hundred feet in seven dancing dancing very graceful and a spider couldn't dance like that a spider came and said to him hey you dance so gracefully i want to know how do you move after you move your 66th foot how do you decide whether to move your 70th foot or your 75th foot huh? <laughs> he started thinking and he stopped doing <laughs> so he couldn't dance after that so we don't want to become we get into paralysis by analysis so that's the first principle so we just understand that i have a relationship with krishna and the relationship is based on service so we focus on service to krishna and during the course of our service to krishna if any trouble comes we see it as a necessary trouble now we may say everything that i do is not a service to krishna there i have i have my own desires yes now krishna doesn't unrealistically expect that all our desires will be purified off immediately but we have to see if a particular desire fulfilling a particular desire is causing too much trouble now we decide is this really worth it say for example if we like to eat some food it's prasad and now i want to go and buy this food i want to cook this food and i want to eat it well that's not a very demanding desire okay just do it and move on but if somebody decides that you know i want to big i love i want to have a big house and in that i will have a big altar then i'll worship krishna in a big way but to get that big house i have to work at a job which is far away from the association of devotees which requires me to work for 14 hours and i don't have any time to chat i am doing it for krishna but then what is happening is it worth it you are taking me away from krishna so we have to if we have certain desires you have to see whatever we get by the desire is it worth the trouble and if it is not worth the trouble then okay we give it see whatever is desired for krishna shouldn't be desired more than krishna i may desire to do something for krishna only but so now the second part now now if sometimes because it's because of my desires another part is even the trouble that comes because of my desires or even the trouble that comes because of my past karma krishna can use it to teach me a lesson krishna can use it to help me move toward him so rather than worrying too much about where something is coming from focus on where it is taking us so focus on your purpose and some troubles say so it's like i'm going on this path and the path itself is is troublesome but i have to go on this path so focus on how can i serve krishna in this situation and whatever troubles come we see whether those troubles are necessary for us to keep doing our service to krishna if they are not then we have to decide is this really that important if not then let it go if you feel it is important okay then do it but have a sense of it is have a sense of purpose and the purpose will provide perspective what is what is a big thing what is a small thing how do you decide that it depends on what is our purpose in life say if i am driving uh, to a particular program at a particular time i shall drive at a particular time then i see hey that's a nice shop that has got some good things which i want to buy should i go and buy it well right now i have to get there so this is not that important thing so it is purpose that provides perspective should i do it or not how important is this should i do it now should i do it later or should i not do it in time so we focus on our purpose we say krishna i want to serve you and krishna will give us the guidance padami buddhi yogam tam yena mam upayanti te and life never comes with the guarantee of right decisions all that we can do is we can get our decision making process as right as possible and that happens by prayer by introspection by looking back at our experience and most importantly within our life there are certain things which we know we should do there are certain things which we know we should not do there are black there is white there is black and within that there are shades of gray so if we do what we know we should do if we avoid that which we know we should not do then by that we are showing krishna that we want to serve him that we want to come closer to him then in the gray zone also krishna will start giving us guidance or if in the gray zone we make a wrong choice krishna will make us aware quickly and we will be able to come back on track so so don't get into that 
worrying too much of each trouble why is it coming focus on the service to krishna and at least with respect to things we know and don't we know what we should do start doing those the meaning will gradually become clear the saying is in a nutshell just focus on the goal and everything behind will rearrange itself to push you in that direction but what's your but even if it doesn't rearrange we may have to rearrange also sometimes but we'll get the intelligence to rearrange that yeah. thank you Okay. Anyone else have a question? Yes, bro. Uh, bro my question was with regards to uh, you mentioned about us taking responsibility and not know the difference between just completely surrendering, saying Krishna, it's all up to you, but then us being neglectful of the actions that we can take. How sometimes when we're taking responsibility, you know, the mind in Maya is very strong. We end up thinking that we are the viewers, and that we are in control of what is happening based on some of the decisions. You know, we might be very intelligent or very strategically planning. We might do things. How do we avoid that, but also still you know, that, hey, I've got to make plans. I've got to still take the responsibility of these things, and then whatever the result is, the result is. Okay, so sometimes when we take responsibility, we start thinking that we are in control and that we are the doers. So how do we avoid that? So we are certainly the doers, but we are not the sole doers. So in I think it is 1816, Krishna says that tatraivam sati kartaram atmanam kevalam tu yah pashyatya akrta buddhitvan nasa pashyati durmati hi. So atmanam kevalam tu yah. If you think that I am the sole doer, that is that person is not able to see properly so we are the doers but we are not the sole doers so we do our even with respect to speaking right now i am planning using my intelligence trying to exercise my voice cords but if i get a sore throat i won't be able to speak is it so the bodily instrument is not in my control so what we we desire and then krishna sanctions and that's how it happens so but we are the doers and what is in our control we have to do so to think of ourselves as the doers is not the illusion to think of ourselves as the sole doers is the illusion hmm? so we understand our place and purpose in the overall scheme of things it's like say in sports there are individual sports and there are team sports say boxing tennis is an individual sports cricket soccer rugby baseball these are team sports so in a team sports each player is a doer each player has to perform but it is not that one player's performance alone leads to victory so similarly for us we are working we have to do our part now when we start thinking that i am the doer so one way to avoid that that feeling is to look at the times when we tried our best and still things didn't come out so if i am the doer then why couldn't i do it at that time or other way is that if we are honest with ourselves there are sometimes that we can see sometimes when we really didn't do much and still good results came out so many other things fell in place in fact even if you look at your own life if you look at our own lives whenever we do anything which is successful suppose it's even spectacular we will realize that so many other things fell in place at that time yeah, so i didn't do those and other things fell in place that's how i was able to do those things so in that sense if it is a little introspection will help us realize that we are not the sole doers so we say that that uh, that krishna has given me some capacity to do certain things he's given me some ability some energy some talents and i need to use it to his, in his service so even when we think even when we are the doers in the sense that we do certain things but still it is uh, krishna who has given us those abilities so what we think we own is actually just on loan <laughs> what we think we own is actually just on loan arjuna was a phenomenal archer but at one time he couldn't fight against some cowherd people who were not wouldn't even know archery very well so what happened he realized that actually i'm not His archery ability is not just mine; it is Krishna's gift for me. So those experiences can also help us realize this, and then we can be responsible 
about doing our part at the same time be detached knowing that our part is not the whole okay so thank you very much should we stop here okay yeah let me know when we should stop yes bro I think it really is. Um, uh, every day we're all faced with so many different circumstances and they can change minute to minute. They have to uh, drive home and then I need to do some duties and then I need to go to the office and I need to talk to a work, a work colleague and then I need to talk to somebody else and then somebody on yeah. the street asks me directions. So many things. Every day, all of us, so many circumstances. Just for some practical application, should we be consciously bringing to our mindful consciousness in every change of circumstance, we should be consciously thinking, oh, my dear Lord, how can I serve you best in this circumstance? Just right down to this. Okay. So, should we be in every situation, if somebody asks us for directions, we're driving a car, we're doing something simply simple. Should we always be asking Krishna, how can I serve you best in this situation? The, the important thing is at one level to do what needs to be done. There is There are two aspects. Bhakti Shila Prabhupada translated as devotional service. So there is service and there is devotion. And service is what we do externally, devotion is what we have internally. Now, which is important? Well, both are important. Mm -hmm. But Krishna gives a hierarchy between 12, 8, 12, 9, 12, 10. He says, highest is if you can do both. You absorb your mind in me and you work for me. But if you can't, then try to absorb your mind in me. And he says, if you can't, at least work for me. So we would say that even if we can't do devotional service, we can at least do the service. What I mean by that is, say suppose, uh, suppose we, have, we are speaking about Krishna. It's directly about Krishna. But even when you are speaking some philosophy about Krishna, it may not be that we are always remembering Krishna. Say if you are asking a question, now I am trying to focus and understand what your question is. Uh, Arjuna when he was fighting the war, he was not constantly, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. No, it was, it was a serious war and he was fighting with full attention. So, it was at a deep level, the intention of the heart and the life was to serve Krishna. At a, at a surface level or at an external level, sometimes the devotion is manifest, sometimes or as devotional activity directly, sometimes it's not manifested. Now, suppose somebody is a devotee and we are talking with them and they start, they start chanting. And you may say, I'm talking with you. Yes, I want to, I'm a devotee, I want to chant. Well, there, if we are trying to do some service together, then their devotion is more constructively manifested at that time by understanding the service and doing it attentively, not just by chanting. So, as, as our remembrance of Krishna should be in complement to our service to Krishna. And sometimes, uh, the service of Krishna may require such attention that the remembrance of Krishna may go into the background at that time. And that's okay. As we keep practicing Bhakti more and more, Krishna becomes a greater presence in our life. And as he becomes a greater presence in our life, then he starts becoming more and more in the foreground of our consciousness. Vishwanath Chakravi Thakur in his Gita commentary used the example that suppose a householder is working at a place far away from their home. Hmm? So then they are working for their family. But their family may be hundreds of miles away. Now they, may, they may be striking some business deals, persuading a client, going and buying something. They are doing so many things and they are trying to do it as well as they can. But in their hearts, they know I am doing all this for my family. So similarly, a devotee, in their heart, they are doing everything for Krishna. But at a practical level, we can try to cultivate a prayerful attitude and think, how can I serve Krishna, are you best at Krishna in this situation? But that prayerful attitude should enhance our service, not distract us from our service. In trying to be prayerful internally, we become inattentive externally. You know, if I'm driving and while driving, I think I should remember Krishna and I take a wrong turn and I have to go somewhere important, then that's I'm being incompetent over there. So the remembrance of Krishna is not like a like a some mechanical recollection of some fact. Somebody asks you, okay, what is the capital of Brazil? 
Uh, I had learned it in my childhood, you know, what is it? <laughs> so it's not like factual recollection. This, we should remember Krishna, that is more not a factual recollection, but a devotional direction. It's where our heart naturally goes because we love Krishna. So when we love someone, it is not that we have to be, it's like a, not a mechanical recollection, it's a spontaneously heart goes toward that. And that will happen gradually as we become purified, as we become more and more attracted toward Krishna. So do the service as much as we can, as well as we can. And let Krishna's remembrance gradually manifest. But of course, while doing various external activities, practical activities, we need to also take time out regularly so that we devote ourselves to Krishna wholeheartedly. If that wholehearted devotion to Krishna is not there, if there is no exclusive time for Krishna, then we won't be able to do inclusive service to Krishna. Inclusive service means when we practically various things for Krishna. And that time Krishna's remembrance is included as the purpose of our life, the purpose of what we are doing. But if you just keep doing those things and don't have time directly to connect with Krishna, it won't be able to sustain it. So devotion has both these aspects. That is, we could say intensive devotion, we focus only on Krishna, and there is inclusive devotion where we do various things as a part of our life with, with Krishna as the purpose included in that service. Okay. Thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada ki, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki, Srimad Bhagavad Gita ki, Thai Gaur Premanande. Shri Prabhupada ki.